What is up, Coach Nick here, and we're gonna be going over 10 plyometric drills to make you a more explosive rugby player on the field. I personally am a forward, and I play flank and a little bit of eight, but let's dive right into it. These plyometric drills are gonna work unilateral strength, they're gonna work horizontal, vertical, lateral, everything that you need in order to make yourself a better player on the pitch. So the first ones we're gonna start with are very simple. We're really trying to teach the athlete how to have strong ankles and very stiff ankles because when you're running, you could have all the strongest legs, quads, glutes, everything that you possibly have. You could produce a lot of force in the gym, but if you can't transfer it through your ankles because your ankles are weak, it's not gonna produce into that explosiveness out on the field. So these first ones are pogo hops, really focusing purely on the ankle and really trying to become in sync with the timing and using the elastic tendon, right, our Achilles, in order to make our jumps as high as possible. Now when you're doing these, you wanna start with both feet and you can even stay standing still or you can start to add a horizontal component of moving forward like I did. And then you can even progress them side to side, single leg, and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. It puts a greater demand on that ankle and you'll really notice the difference between each side so you know what to work on. All right, next is just a multi-directional pogo hop. So again, you can start with both feet and then you can progress to single leg. If you're not doing these at the field, but on the gym, one thing I like to do is add a plate or a little box that's about two to three inches high. That's just another dynamic to it with it. But here's how you do it. Again, we're trying to have a quick ground contact time and have smooth transition. So all you really need is a line we're just going to be going in a clockwise and counterclockwise motion. Now we're going to start to work on our lateral force production. So I'm going to show you a some progressions to this but these are called skater jumps so if you want more of an extensive plyometric that's like the rhythm the hop the ankle strength stuff here's what you're gonna do okay so just find a line you're not worried about distance you're worried about how quickly you can get off the ground and transition to the next jump okay so it's just quick jumps being quick back and forth you can set some distances side to side. That's probably the easiest route. Or you can also take these into a little bit of a skater bound, okay? Just going side to side. It's just quick, 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 quick. I'll typically warm up with those before a rugby game because there's a lot of cutting in our rugby games um, as a way to prime the ankles, get the glute knees and things kind of activated and ready to go. But for the skater jump, okay, first you want to start with stability. So when you're doing the skater jump, to work on your stability, again, I don't care about how far you're trying to go, but you want to make sure you can jump, land, and stick, and hold for a two to three second count before jumping to the next one. Once you can do that, then I would progress you to letting it go and getting as far as you can with the jumps. Another kind of big mistake I see with the skater jump, especially with younger athletes or a little less coordinated athletes, is that when they go to jump, they think they just need to swing this front leg out and they're trying to get distance by swinging the front leg out when the purpose of the drill is to be able to produce power off that back leg. So yes, you're gonna throw this leg and throw this knee, but it shouldn't be the main thing carrying you over. There will be some momentum from it, but you don't want it to be the only thing, okay? So here it's big 
push, land, right, reset, push, land, reset. Okay, once you've got that down, then you can start to progress to some rebound skater jumps where it's jump, jump, and going back and forth. The thing, if you're trying to go for pure power output, don't try to reset because you're gonna limit yourself or you're not gonna be able to handle how much force is actually coming into the side right here. Okay, so you wanna just try to jump as far as you can, jump as far as you can. Another one that I really like, again, is progressing this into more of a bound where you're jumping at side to side at a 45 degree angle. So jumping side to side. So the next one to work a little bit more unilateral power in the vertical direction is going to be a step up jump. It's gonna help you mimic how hard you should put your foot into the ground and how much power you should create with each and every step, especially in your acceleration phase of a sprint. Now, typically you're gonna do these at a gym with a box or a bench. But if you're at the field and need an alternative, another great one is just an alternating jump lunge. So you're just going to get to where your knees are about 90-90, balls of your feet, back, feet, back foot and toe is up, and you're trying to jump as high as you can, okay? And you're switching midair. So And that's the setup jump or alternating jump lunge. Now this next one is going back into the lateral plane and it's called a lateral bound. So think of it as a, an explosive and bouncy, almost like shuffle step, okay? Except we're really trying to focus on being springy and bouncy off that back leg and trying to produce some power out of it, okay? So I'll show you. So the next set of plyometrics are gonna be all about horizontal force production. So these are all gonna be variations of a broad jump. Some that are gonna work on repeat horizontal force production and others that are gonna work on some unilateral work into some horizontal force production. And then finally transitioning force from horizontal to vertical so you have a well-rounded power development exercise. Okay, so the first one is a repeat broad jump. Now I recommend if you haven't done these, you start at a small, you're not trying to jump as far as you possibly can with each and every rep. I want you to take it down to about 60, 70%, feel the timing, feel how you need to coordinate your body and cycle your legs back and through and under to be able to have a progressive jump. And then once you get that down, then what I like to do is a, it's like a waterfall type of effect. Okay, so it gradually gets more and more and more as you go on. So maybe you start with 50% for your first jump, then 60, then 70, then 80, then 90. And then your next set, you come in and you start at 70, 80, 90, 100, 100. So you progressively build up to it so you can learn the mechanics and timing with it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some of the broad jumps. Okay, now we're gonna progress the broad jump into two broad jumps into a vertical jump. All right, so the next one's just a progression on this, and now it's going to be two single leg jumps into a vertical jump, or two single leg broad jumps into a vertical jump. You can also do an alternating bound, but you wanna make sure after your jump, you have your plant leg to gather and jump up as high as you can. All right, this next one's all about repeat, quick vertical force production and making sure that you're trying to jump as high as you possibly can while getting off the ground as quick as you possibly can. So these are hurdle hops, they're really great. Now if you don't have hurdles, it's okay. You can literally just imagine that they're there, all right? Think quick ground contact time, landing on the ball of your feet and trying to get up as fast as you can. Now the next one is a depth jump. So that's where you're coming off of an elevated surface 
landing and trying to quickly get up as high as you possibly can. These are really good because gravity accelerating you down is gonna require a greater eccentric load that you have to overcome and work the stretch shorten cycle a lot more. So these are really great for improving your overall jump height. So I don't have a box, but I would do these at a gym, but I'm gonna use this tire. Now when you're doing these, you don't wanna choose a height that you can't land and absorb and stop the momentum effectively. So if you land and you're kinda of shaky with it, it's too high. You wanna make sure that you're able to land, stop, and get immediately back up. This might be like right at my limit, so we'll see how this goes. Let's try one more. I didn't stop as quick as I wanted to. I sank in my squat a little too much. Okay, this is another variation of the depth jump where you're trying to land and jump as high as you can. I like this one a little bit better because it gives you a target to aim for with your jump and it takes away a little bit of the impact from landing straight on down. Especially if you're an older athlete like myself, I'm 33, about to be 34. I'm trying to stay explosive, as powerful, as strong as I possibly can without wearing down my body on top of a seven seasons, a normal seasons, filling club games. like. So it can be a lot, so I try to tend to choose jumps and power-based movements and plyometrics that save my joints a little bit. So here is the depth to box jump. Now this next one is taking the same principle, but now we're gonna apply it to a lateral jump, okay? So it's a depth skater or a depth jump into a skater jump, okay? So this is all the unilateral work. All right, so for this one, start low, because you want, I wanna make sure that you can actually land and stick this and stabilize this before redirecting on out. Thank you guys for watching, truly appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want more training and more videos just like this. And if you wanna see more training methods that we use inside of our program to train rugby athletes like myself, go check out our free guide about the seven training methods for explosive strength and power. Other than that, train hard and I'll see you in the next video.